right at 6 p.m. Just getting ready to go to a briefing with the producers of this festival. It's about 80 degrees, beautiful. Light winds, dust is coming up, so that's gonna be an issue. They'll have to get some water trucks out here. It's looking good. Getting ready with my rig here. Just got my multi-cam, got my cap, got my binoculars. Here I've got my bug spray. Hopefully that holds up, it doesn't have any deep in it. Here I've just got my gloves. This is an experiment I've been doing using my cat tourniquet and strapping it straight onto the Velcro. It kind of works, I mean it stays on, but now this Velcro is exposed and it's not staged correctly. Just a concept. Got my glasses. And here I've got my headlamp and some ground crap. After waiting for the briefing from the festival organizers, things are backed up, so we've been sitting here for about 45 minutes waiting. But they're on their way. Hurry up and wait. This makes this festival very rare. They've got a man-made lake here behind me. And you'll see it once the people arrive. It'll be going crazy. There's floaties people put in there and huge party on the water. There's a big DJ booth here. So this will just be going off. Here is my camping. Pretty much the same as always. Just got my snug pack bivy this time because it got pretty cold. Not pretty cold, but it got down to 45. So I added that and it's just my little shelter hiding here. Now I've completed my change in my uniform. These tie-dyes, we learned years ago that we want to be as, you know, happy and fun as possible. I wanted to talk to you about subscriptions. Now, if you dig my content, you want to see more of it, you subscribing, sharing, liking, whatever it is you do on YouTube helps out the channel, helps me out, so I appreciate it. Somebody was asking me about my shoes. These are by Basque, Basque. This shoe is actually very legendary. The Juxta, right? This shoe was worn on the raid that killed Osama bin Laden. They picked this shoe because of its sole. They wore this exact shoe. They just put a gator on top of it. Pretty wild. Beautiful shoe. One of the best boot shoes that I've ever had in my life. I mentioned the gators and somebody said, what's a gator? This is a gator behind me. Okay, it's just a side-by-side. -side. It's a little four-by-four -four vehicle buggy. That's a gator. And we have these. Changes everything when you're security because this is a big property, right? So I've got to get over there and it's a quarter mile away and there's an emergency over here. There's a response here. So you've got a gator. It's a whole different game. You're zipping all over the place. Here is the example I've been telling you about when you gotta have your gear on you because you're gonna be way far away from the festival. Behind me is a little road that leads to the property owner's home, okay? And I'll turn this around. This road comes in here and we don't want, you can see the parking for the festival here. There's some of the festival and from there, it was like a 10 minute walk to here. There's nothing here, but we don't want anyone coming down onto the, prop, onto the property owner's land. And there's an entrance that this road splits off on to a main artery, right? So we need to protect all entrances and egresses, most importantly entrances for security. You can't just have something open. That's how someone with Bad intentions can sneak in, get in. So here I am. I'll be here for six hours on this post in the middle of nowhere. But that's what it takes. You must secure the perimeter.
What's wild about working these festivals, I'm four hours away from where I'm currently staying up in Portland. So from working these festivals, doing security, I've been able to see all parts of Oregon. There's desert, there's forest, ocean. It's a great, great thing. And you get to see these incredible places where these people live. I mean, this is just gorgeous. This is all theirs, right? That little private lake that you've seen, just beautiful. It's about 85 degrees. The low at night's been getting down to 45. I've got my military MSS patrol bag and I'm in my snug pack bivy. I'm in my full pajamas that are the under heat or 32 heat. <laughs> I haven't slept much, I'm a little out of it. But just beautiful, how gorgeous is it? Look at this beautiful stand of pussy willows. I've seen so many bushcraft videos of people using them for survival. And you can eat them too, but they're great tinders, all kinds of stuff you can do with them. But on this waterway, there's um, a whole stand that just winds through. This must be a little crick. They're just beautiful. Look at these. They look like big um, chocolate covered bananas. This is a funny part that people don't realize when they think that they can walk from one place to the other, right? They look up and they go, I can get over there, right over there, real quick, right, easy. Well, when you're walking in this, it's all uneven, potholes, you're tripping. You have to learn to walk a real dead leggy, soft way, or you'll break your ankles. But you see those little, you know, that little stage? You look at it, you go, oh, it's a straight shot. That'll take me, you know, a few minutes. Mm-mm, that's 10 minutes minimum. It's always fun to get to explore when you're on these properties. I mean, it's this. That looks like lichen. It almost looks like broken up concrete. I think it's all natural. Yeah, but it looks like it's, uh, Concrete. There's just a big pile of it sitting there in the middle of the field. It's all sagebrush. Right? Tumbleweed. Whenever I'm at these places, I think, wouldn't it be awesome to do a video out here? You know, overnighter? Well, I'd stay out here for weeks. This is my little uh, Cadillac. Just a golf cart, but it works. You know, if you just go real slow, it does work. But I'm talking real slow, like as slow as it'll go. One, we can't kick up dust. You know, they do their best to wet it down, but it just, you know, I'm going one mile an hour and I'm bucking already. What's funny is, you know, you're assigned to a certain place and I'm nowhere near here. So you first get here, this is all empty. You know, 12 hours later, you come up and it's packed. You go, Jesus. And then three days later, you come up and it's empty. You know, people have to get back to work, get back to reality. I'm shoveling people back and forth, different points where they need to be. But I don't know if you've been to these festivals. In the background, you can see I'll pull up and it looks like, you know, a camp, but it's themed, right? It'll say O'Brien's Irish Pub or, you know, McNasty's Pub or DJ Ellis. Well, what it is is they set up their own little mini festivals inside of this festival. I'll show you one up here. And they're, you know, they're DJs or musicians and they just set up their own festival inside the festival and have their own parties. 
that people come just to go to those parties inside of it. It's pretty cool. So here's one here you can see. They got their DJ stuff set up, put down on the dance floor. They've got their VIP room. This is one of the main stages. And this is all professional, so there's tens of thousands of dollars to put this together. The sound system alone is probably a hundred thousand. And the people to run it, the gaffers, a lot of money goes into this stuff. Behind me you can see our headquarters. And it can sleep about six people in there. So that's great for people that don't have tents and that kind of stuff. Show up, they want to work. Got a place to sleep. And we've got the Starlink. I believe in the last video, I think I shot a little piece on it. So full Wi Fi, just amazing, game changer. That enables us to operate all the systems, keeping track of cars, equipment, posts, and stuff. So wanted to show you the um, famous beach dust, fair dust. <laughs> We're on a farm, so this is primo soil, but this stuff, you know, infects everything. Look at that, covered. Well, that's all she wrote. I'll tell you some stories in private. <laughs>